Super size versus super skinny is dramatically turning the tables on the UK's most extreme over and under eaters as we expose the shocking effects of their dangerous diets in Dr. Christian's feeding clinic. We've got a whole load more fat we need to add to this. Still want that burger? That's horrible. We're bringing our super sizers face to face with some of the biggest people on the planet. Hi, I'm Nikki James. I weigh over 51 stones. And at the opposite end of the bodyweight scale, journalist and recovered anorexic Emma Wolf explores the world of eating disorders. I want to investigate why certain people are more prone to develop an eating disorder than others. Emma will meet people battling with a variety of conditions, including the mother of a girl who lost her fight against anorexia. It's brought it home to me in a way that nothing else has. What I really need to do right now is to call my mum. So sorry. And comes face to face with the extremity of long-term disordered eating when she meets Valeria Levitin, reportedly the world's thinnest woman. And over in the US, Dr. Christian explores a growing obesity crisis in one of the country's entertainment capitals. In America, when it comes to obesity, Sin City certainly lives up to its name. Las Vegas has shockingly high rates of obesity, fast food consumption, and it's rapidly becoming a bariatric surgery capital. One clinic reported a shocking 80% rise in weight loss surgery in just one year. The sewers are so choked with fat, if they weren't emptied, the strip would disappear under rivers of human waste. And the hospitals are packed with people ravaged by obesity-related disease. You can actually see the bone with the naked eye in there. You know, I don't think you ever get used to seeing wounds like that. Super Size versus Super Skinny is back. Obesity levels have more than doubled in the UK in the last 25 years. In England, 61% of adults and 28% of children are now overweight or obese. It's an epidemic of gigantic proportions. So Dr. Christian is attempting to tackle the problem at both ends of the scale in his feeding clinic as he exposes these super sizers and super skinnies to their opposites. I've brought together 16 people with some truly terrible eating habits. By pairing them up and getting them to swap diets in my feeding clinic, I'm hoping this is going to be just the tonic they need to turn their lives around. Okay, Gary, come forward. So I'm going to pair you with... with Amy. Come on forward and meet each other. Hi, right, Amy. God. You're very skinny, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. very skinny. What's your weight, do you know? Around eight stone. Eight stone? Ish. <laughs> what do you weigh, do you know? Of... About 22 stone. A 22 stone? Yeah, so that's two, like two and, and a half, half of me. you. Yeah. So what foods do you like? Uh, coffee, mostly. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> For breakfast? Yeah, oh yeah. I'm in trouble then. <laughs> what, do, what do you have? Um, cheese sandwich. Or breakfast. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. When I first saw Amy, I was so shocked because she was so slim. And I was like, wow, she needs help. I was a bit overwhelmed, actually. He's my exact opposite. He's quite big around the belly, which is a bit daunting. <laughs> Chef Gary is constantly surrounded by food and finds temptation hard to resist, but his young mum Amy survives on barely one meal a day and is seriously undernourished. But I'm hoping their time in the feeding clinic will help them both to realise the damage they're doing to their bodies. 38-year-old Caribbean chef Gary from London weighs in at 22 stone. I'm just a fatty boom boom. Working 70 hours a week running his restaurant, Gary's life and soul goes into his food and his belly. Being a chef is a problem because I'm always tasting these dishes 
I'm like, wow, that one tastes special today. Mm, very nice. There's me with a little bowl. It's nothing. It's just a little snack. Mm. Gary is a food lover. Really, he's surrounded by food probably 12 hours a day. My portions ain't like, wow, like mountains. I just like eat every two hours. Mm. After a busy day's work, Gary's stomach doesn't clock off. Sometimes it could be 12 o'clock. I still have my dinner was like rice and peas. And after, I still pig out. And Gary has a lifelong obsession with cheese. When I was young, my mum decided to bring me a cheese and pickle sandwich. I was like, wow, this is heaven. If I'm upset, give me some cheese and I'm cool. That's my medicine. I can't talk too much about cheese, it's telling me mad. Ah! But all this cheese has left its mark. Recently diagnosed with high blood pressure, Gary knows he needs to curb his greed. I don't want my mum and dad burying me. There's a cycle of life and I want to live my fullness. I want to die like a, a for, for normal reasons, not because I'm eating too much. Whilst Gary's big problem is that he eats too much, our super skinny has the opposite issue. 26-year-old Amy weighs just over eight stone, and with a BMI of 17.9, this is below the healthy level. She's a single mum devoted to toddler Jamie. And whilst Amy's guilty of skipping meals, Jamie eats like a king. He'll have a proper dinner, but half of the time I'm just not hungry. You have it. Oh. It's not purposely starving <laughs> myself. Yes, I'm tidying up, I'll sort of pick what's left off of his plate. Mummy have it. But if he's left a sausage or something like that, then, yeah, I'll have that. <laughs> Amy gets through the day on coffee. First thing in the morning, mid-morning, lunchtime, any time of the day. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go through five or six coffees a day, two sugars at a time. And all that coffee is curbing her appetite. Amy has always been very slim. She always looks so tired and just malnourished, I suppose. Things have got so bad, Amy's resorted to shopping in the kids' departments. I do it quite comfortably fit into children's clothes. It is embarrassing. It is like I've got the body of a 12-year-old. Amy's worried her bad eating habits will rub off on her son. I don't want Amy to think that I'm healthy and that this is the way that he needs to be. Before our super skinny and super size enter the feeding clinic, Dr Christian wants to shock Gary into seeing what he could become if he carries on eating at his present rate. So he's sending him across the Atlantic to Farmington, Missouri, to meet ex-security guard Neri. My name's Neri Britton, and I'm 36 and a half stone. After years of binging, Neri's weight had ballooned to 50 stone when he had an accident that changed his life. I was going to the restroom one morning and I fell and it broke my back. I was in a coma for three days. And when I come out of it, they told me that I was going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life. Neri fell because his legs gave way under his 50 stone body. He spent four years recuperating in a nursing home where he met Debbie. Debbie is my caregiver. She's also my fiance. Paralyzed from the waist down, Neri uses a wheelchair and has a catalog of health problems due to his obesity. I have diabetes, kidney failure, sleep apnea. When I have to go to the bathroom, I have to go on paper towels. You're getting there. She says it doesn't bother her, but it has to some. With Debbie's help, Neri's lost 13 stone. That's my goal, is to make sure that he loses as much as he can and that he lives a long and happy life. Love you. Love you. Cheese-loving chef Gary weighs almost 22 stone. More than eight stone overweight, he is starting to suffer with fatigue, breathlessness and high blood pressure due to his size. So Dr. Christian is giving Gary a wake-up call, sending him stateside to see the terrible health problems associated with obesity. I don't want to be big no more. I mean, we're in big America and I see a lot of big people that their average size ain't the same, same size as London. And I know right now I'm going to see something that's going to make me really pull up my socks. And it's about time 
Gary's meeting 36 Stone Nary to find out how his mammoth size has affected every aspect of his life. How are you doing? What's your name? Nary. Nary, yeah? Yeah. Wow. You're big dude. Yes, I am. Very big. Wow. How much you weigh, Nary? I weigh 500. 500? Yes. That's nearly double, that's just under double to me. Yep. How old are you, Nary? I'm 37. You're 37? Yes. Me and you the same age? Mm-hmm. Wow. It's like he can't move. He's just there stuck. He can't do nothing. He mostly, I don't know how he goes toilet, how he baths. Nary's lack of mobility is already making Gary think. He's about to find out how little Nary can do for himself. I take care of everything from feeding him, getting him his food, to go number two. It's shocking because um, I'm so independent myself. Mm -hmm. I, I love to do everything myself, you know. When you lose your independence, you just want to give up. Because of his size, Neri cannot fit in the bathroom, so they've been forced to adapt the garage. This is the only way that you could have a wash. Yep, other than taking a bath in the bed. This is the reality of how I live. Neri's skin is very delicate, and extreme care needs to be taken when washing. See, I think he's even got one where it's split. Oh, yeah. There. I wouldn't feel comfortable with my missus doing this to me. I never did. When I see his missus washing him, it reminds me of my mum washing me when I was a baby. But I'm a big man now, so I don't want... I, I do this myself, you know? I don't want to see you end up like this. Thanks. Neri's health condition requires close supervision by the district nurse. The folds of fat are a breeding ground for bacteria, and his skin is riddled with painful sores. This is a big sore here. That's an infection that went all the way down to the bone and ate the skin away. Oh, that big old hole you see? Yeah. It was as big enough. It was big enough you could put your feet inside of it. Oh, shit. This, this is too much. Seeing firsthand where his weight gain could lead has put Gary under pressure. He starts to feel unwell and complains of a throbbing headache. Concerned, Debbie takes his blood pressure. This isn't that good. I got 232 over 115. It's almost double the healthy level. Let's call that ambulance. Uh, we need an ambulance. We have a guy that's really sick. We're getting it straight away. The emergency services arrive and attend to Gary. You take blood pressure medicine? No. No medical problems at all? No, I'm overweight. 280 over 120. 280? You're really high. Seriously overweight, with high blood pressure, Gary's at risk of having a stroke or heart attack. At any time, you could blow a vessel in your head. Fearing the worst, the paramedics take him to hospital for specialist care. Today, with Gary going to the hospital, it really upset me. It brought back a bunch of memories, bad memories. Being alone, no family, no friends with you. And I hope he never goes through what I've went through. After extensive tests and medication, Gary is discharged and allowed to return home to the UK. I hope it scared him enough that he wants to get healthy. Gary's experience in America may be just what he needs to get his health in check. I can't gamble with my life. I can't say, OK, that's not going to happen to me and carry on eating slack. The reality is it can happen to me and everyone's in control of their destiny and I need to be in control of mine. I'm not going to forget about this. I can't forget about this. Dr. Christian is sending super-sized Gary and super-skinny Amy into his feeding clinic, where they will swap diets for two days. He's hoping that by being confronted by each other's terrible eating habits, they'll be shocked into changing their lifestyle. After his scare in America, Gary has been to his GP and has been put on blood pressure medication. And today, he's checking in at the feeding clinic. The first thing Dr. Christian wants to address is his recent health scare. Let's go back, first of all, and talk about America. That was kind of good for you. That was a shock for you Definitely. straight away. Definitely. And you've also had another shock, which was you've mm. recently had to be put on blood pressure tablets. Yeah. Because your blood pressure was sky high, wasn't yeah. it? It was very shocking for me. And, like, it changed my life. And, you know, it's time for me to take myself 
my weight problem serious. I think quite often that the thing with blood pressure is actually you feel fine, you can chug along quite happily yeah. until some doctor at some stage says, oi, your blood pressure's far too high, you need to start taking these pills. I hate to use the cliche wake-up call, but it was, wasn't it? You thought, I, God, you I'm young what? and I'm already on pills. It's for me to like sort it out as soon as possible to get back on track. You getting an awful lot of salt, two and a half times your daily recommended amount of salt. Wow. That will be contributing to your blood pressure. Because I think with the proper diet, losing your weight and doing some exercise, yeah. you may be able to come off your blood pressure pills. Yeah. That would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? Definitely. Next up in the feeding clinic is young mum, Amy. By putting her toddler's needs ahead of her own, she's not eating enough food. Weighing in at little over eight stone, coffee addict Amy survives on 1,389 calories a day, 600 less than her body actually needs. You're a bit of a caffeine junkie, aren't you? <laughs> I am a bit, <laughs> You know, you use coffee to give you energy and to suppress the hunger pangs, but actually, what's coffee giving you from a nutritional point of view? Nothing. You basically run on sugar and caffeine, but I bet you feel generally pretty exhausted for most of the day, don't you? I do. Oh, I get so tired. I think that's why I drink so much coffee, to try and keep myself awake. There is a far better, easier way <laughs> to making you feel a little bit more energetic. And guess what that is? Proper food. Proper food. <laughs> it's time for Super Size and Super Skinny to start the diet swap. First up, breakfast, and Gary's waving goodbye to his usual start to the day. Amy's getting Gary's toasty, dripping with cheese, followed by a large bowl of honey-coated crunchy cereal with milk, washed down with a glass of blackcurrant squash. Versus two milky coffees with two sugars each. I've never really been able to stomach breakfast. I'm food orientated, I'm a chef, I love food. So when I wake up, that's the first thing that was on my mind. Mm. So when do you first eat in the day then? Lunchtime? About two o'clock, three o'clock normally. Two o'clock. Breakfast is something you eat, not drink, as far as I'm concerned. Will you stop crunching so loud, please? <laughs> You're taking the mick out of me. <laughs> when was the last time you had coffee? I've tried to drink coffee four times in my life. Really? I just don't like the flavour. Two cups of coffee, how could she do this to me? How could she do it to herself? Without food, I haven't started my day, so technically speaking, I'm still sleeping. Oh, dear. I felt really guilty. I'm sat there eating what he would normally have and he's there with a drink that he just can't stand. With Gary desperate for food and Amy desperate for coffee, lunchtime arrives. On the menu is one of Chef Gary's favourites. Oh, my gosh. A traditional Jamaican dish of saltfish and ackee served with fried peppers, a side of fried plantain and, to follow, macaroni cheese, adding up to a considerable 851 calories versus a liquid lunch. Two coffees with sugar and milk. And you, you'd have a lunch like this every day? Yes. Wish me luck. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It tastes nice, doesn't it? I'm really enjoying this, actually. I bet you are. Oh, that ain't cutting it. Oh. Overwhelmed by the salt fish, Amy moves on to the cheese-laden macaroni. I normally would have had two meals by now. I hope dinner time's good. I'm not putting pressure on you. There is dinner. Yeah, but you said there was lunch. Look, look at this. Wow, you look pregnant. I am so full up. I don't think I'm going to eat ever again. Is that what my food's doing to you? That's just what I'm eating today. Oh, wow, I'm hungry. My belly's rumbling every five minutes. So obviously right now I'm not the happiest bunny. Should we compare? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Cheeseaholic Gary has already served up two cheesy dishes to Amy. But does he have any idea how much of his favourite dairy product he eats in a year? Come on in and join me here. I want you to have a look at this. Wow. That's a lot of cheese. That is an understatement. About 100 grams a day you get through Gary, 700 grams a week. Three kilos a month, mm. 36 kilos of cheese a year. Bloody hell. It's a lot of cheese. Gary's getting an extra 400 calories every day from his cheese intake alone. 
Dr. Christian wants to shock Gary by showing him how much saturated fat he gets each year just from his cheese habit. That's revolting. That's one bucket. My insides must be really caked up. In fact, there is 13 litres of oil. Gary also consumes a dangerously high 650 grams of salt a year from cheese. This will have seriously affected his blood pressure. Yeah, that's a killer. I'm killing myself slowly. In total, Gary's consuming 181 grams of fat a day. That's almost twice the guided daily amount. Dr. Christian wants to show him the damage this is doing to his insides. This is a massive great blood vessel about the size of a hose pipe that runs down the middle of your body. It's called the aorta. And you can see inside, it's all smooth. It's all a uniform color. This one, however, is a very different story. Oh, it looks disgusting. This is called atheroma. And this is fatty cholesterol deposits that build up on the inside of your arteries. All right, and it thins them and it narrows them and combined with the amount of salt in your diet that's putting your blood pressure up. Atheroma increases the chance of having potentially fatal conditions such as a heart attack, burst aneurysm or stroke. You will already have these sorts of deposits. I'm a bit nervous because it's like I'm looking inside me and I don't want that to be me. That was revolting. That was another shock to my system. Cheese is poison. Emma Wolfe is an author, journalist, and a recovered anorexic who battled through her eating disorder for 10 years. Anorexia developed instantly. It just clicked into something in my brain, and I spiralled into this rapid, huge weight loss. It's been 12 months since Emma's last investigation. Each year, almost 12 and a half thousand new eating disorder cases are reported. Girls aged between 15 and 19 account for over a third of these new cases, suffering from anorexia, bulimia and other eating disorders. Tonight, Emma's looking into the disturbing world of pro-Anna websites, online forums that promote anorexia as a lifestyle choice, giving tips on how to starve successfully. Recently, for an article, I did look online at some of these websites, and they absolutely horrify me. Pro-Anna users shared dangerous weight loss tips, purging methods, and pictures of themselves and celebs looking painfully thin. They encourage each other to keep what they're doing a secret from their family and friends. What these websites are doing is glorifying the skeletal frame, the emaciated body. It's just everything that I'm against. A 2011 EU Kids Online report revealed that 10% of 11 to 16-year-olds have visited a pro-anorexia website. 24-year-old Lexi is a recovering anorexic who used pro-ana websites to help her in her quest for extreme weight loss. I was first diagnosed with anorexia when I was 17. But I feel my eating disorder started a long time before that mentally. When I was younger, I was always classed as the skinny mini. Hitting puberty was a big thing for me because I felt like an expectation to stay as the skinny mini of the family. I first came across a pro-ana website when there was quite a lot of things in the media about celebrities developing anorexia. And I think one click and I was led onto a pro-ana website. From the minute you woke up, you wanted to prove your worth to the website. So you wanted to go on and post how much weight you'd lost that morning, what your plan was for the day, how much you planned to eat, how much you planned to exercise. Physically, I was having heart palpitations. My blood pressure was extremely low and I was collapsing all the time and I was hospitalized for it. I've been in recovery for two years and obviously I still have to try every day and fight it. I wouldn't say I'm 100% recovered, but I'm definitely on the right path. I think when you're at your most vulnerable, you go on and you're just kind of taken into a world where you're being positively acknowledged for things that are actually damaging to your health. And did you feel as though it was encouraging the anorexia? Definitely, yeah. Um, I actually learned how to purge through one of those websites. Really? Um, through somebody posting a video of how to do it. Emma wants to delve deeper into the way these websites work. I received a bracelet, which I've got here, and it's called a Unity bracelet, and it's supposed to be so that you can recognise others going through the same disorder. But actually, it was used very, very differently. It would remind you to not eat every time you lifted your arm up to your mouth. 
Because Pro Anna websites appeal to young people under 20, Emma wants to show a group of parents of teenage children the graphic content that their kids may be accessing online. Oh my God. Mm. That is appalling. I've got uh, twins, are 16, have one child that's having issues. I, I don't know these sites personally, but I'm pretty sure that some of these are things that she's gone onto and looked up. How does it alarming. make you feel as alarming. parents? Absolutely alarming. I seriously think that some sort of regulation has to be brought in or fought for. I can say that I'm honestly shocked at what we've seen on those websites. And as someone who had anorexia for so long, I think there must be something that we can do. Concerned by the serious harm pro Anna websites cause, Emma visits Parliament to meet MP Mark Hunter, who has been campaigning for these websites to be banned. We've spoken to parents who actually weren't aware of these websites. Mm. Do you think that's a growing problem? I think that's a big part of the problem, certainly, yes. I mean, I, I wasn't aware as a parent, um, you know, when, until I went and uh, learnt more about this from the treatment centre in my own patch, uh, that they existed at all. To me, Abolishing pro Anna websites is a no-brainer. Self-censorship, I think, is part of the answer from the service providers themselves that, that run these websites. But also, I think government has a role to make sure that the specialist advice and assistance is there for young people when they or their families are ready to reach out and seek proper help and advice. The best way for parents to protect their children online is by using media software to restrict access to specific sites. Cheese-loving chef Gary is used to consuming almost 4,000 calories a day. Having not eaten anything so far in the feeding clinic, he's exhausted and desperate for cheese. I need some food, please. I'm so weak. I've had nothing all day. Four cups of coffee in front of me. I'm hallucinating now. Hopefully this food downstairs for me, because if not, I don't know what I'm going to do. Dinner time, and will Gary finally get something to satisfy his hunger? Oh, my soul watering is amazing. All he has is a measly egg sandwich, a glass of squash and a cup of tea. And it's fish again for Amy, this time fried, accompanied by an enormous portion of rice and peas, fried onions and peppers, salad and coleslaw. It's finished off with a cheese and pickle sandwich chaser. How can you stomach so much food? I'm a big guy. Do you think you hide behind that? Well, really, at work I do 10 or 12 hour shifts. I'm still struggling to see how you think this is a normal dinner. Without the sandwich, it's normal. The sandwiches are extras. It's just normal. It's not. It is. It's not it a normal is. portion. My meals is massive. But that's how I eat it, that's how my whole family eats. It's a Caribbean thing, I think. The next day, Gary's woken up ravenous. All he ate yesterday was one egg sandwich worth 325 calories, a twelfth of his usual intake. Breakfast is served, and for coffee lover Amy, it's four buttered crumpets with chunks of cheddar and a large slice of cake. And Gary has a glass of squash. Oh, I need some food. <laughs> I'm hungry, my belly's rumbling. Someone help me, please. Amy may find it funny, but for Gary, it's no laughing matter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chunks of cheese. I don't know how he can physically stomach that amount of cheese. It's making me feel sick. <laughs> Two days, no food. Come on. That's not normal. To watch all that cheese, it's just too much for me. I think it probably is the first time in Gary's life that he's ever been properly hungry. Gary looks like he has reached the end of his tether. It's been an emotional morning for Gary and Amy, but there's a surprise. They each have a letter from a close family member who is worried about their weight. Oh, to Gary. Gary's is from his mum. I am so proud of you. Over the years, I had concerns about your health. You are always tired, yet still you don't slow down. I pray that the good Lord will guide you and give you the strength to overcome your weight problem. Wow. It's like she's here now saying this to me.
Amy's letter is from her sister. You made the decision to go through this experience knowing it would be difficult and emotional. <laughs> I'm so excited to see you turning your world around. Continue this experience knowing how much your family love you. Now eat a burger and eat your greens. <laughs> <laughs> your family's obviously concerned about your weight, yeah? I knew my mum was worried, but I didn't realise how much everybody else had picked up on things. Okay. It's time now, isn't it? Yeah. Amy and Gary may have support from their families, but their time in the feeding clinic is far from over. And it's already lunchtime. For Amy, it's a three-egg mushroom omelette cooked in butter, baked beans, two thick slices of bread, and the fish today is smoked salmon. For Gary, two coffees with milk and sugar. Amy, I'm very upset. I already know I'm, I just definitely can't do the salmon. The way you eat, I could tell that like you just need the food in front of you. Your appetite's there, but you just don't entertain it. Watching Amy plough through the plateful of food is pushing Gary to the limit. Amy, I'm, I'm getting a bit sick of your coffee. I've lost all my... I've lost my mojo. I can't take it no more. It's too much for me. See you later. Another meal with no food has broken Gary. I don't think I want any more Seeing the effect her meals are having on him is making Amy realise she has to look after herself better. If I go to somebody else's house for dinner and they'll cook me a big dinner, I will eat a big dinner. But to cook one for myself, I need to give myself a kick up the backside to eat properly, to look after myself properly. It's the last supper, and time to find out if coffee addict Amy and cheese-loving chef Gary have learnt anything in the feeding clinic. Oh, my life. On the menu tonight, it's a super-sized Chinese banquet. Prawn balls, sweet and sour chicken with a huge serving of fried rice and mushroom stew. And at last, Gary's getting something hot, a chicken dinner with mash, peas and gravy. Thank you for not letting me down. I knew there was more to you than egg sandwiches. Gary's enjoying every morsel. There's still food on my fingers. <laughs> Is there? Are you sure? Mm. After two days of eating to excess, Amy's determined to change her ways. It's not just me that my weight is affecting. It's not selfish for me to put myself first every so often. Yeah. <laughs> Especially at dinner times. And Gary's learnt there's more to life than eating. Seeing you going through my food, it showed me that I don't need as much food as, as I take in. I know I could just cut my portions in half. And there's a revelation. I'm not going to eat no more cheese no more. Mm. Cheese is my enemy. As an intense two days in the feeding clinic comes to a close, Dr Christian has drawn up a programme for them both. This is your take-home information. These are your healthy eating plans for the next three months and hopefully for an awful lot longer after that. So, Gary, here we go. This one is for you. And, Amy, this one is yours. To get to a healthy weight, Amy needs to increase her calories to 2,500 a day. Her diet of sugary coffee and leftovers will be replaced with three meals a day, packed with starchy foods, fruit and vegetables. Gary will cut his calories to two and a half thousand, with portion sizes, cheese and salt massively reduced. It's a lifestyle change, not a diet, aimed at lowering his blood pressure as well as his weight. I'm going to follow Dr Christian's advice to the letter, and it's going to be a whole new me. I'm not eating that much cheese ever again in my whole entire life. Never. Gary and Amy will be back in three months when Dr Christian will be weighing up their progress. No more cheese, Gary. And please, no more coffee. No more. <laughs> we'll find out later how they got on. The 40 million visitors who come here to Las Vegas every year come for the entertainment, the gambling, the food and the excess. But for the two million permanent residents, there's a very different story. Vegas, Nevada has 68% more fast food restaurants than the average US city. 
And with almost a quarter of Nevada residents having had no exercise in the last month, the result is an obesity epidemic. But before we explore the horrendous impact the Las Vegas lifestyle has had on its people, we're going underground. Think Vegas and you think glamour. You don't think sewage. Fat from thousands of burgers, pizzas and fast food gets rinsed down sinks and flushed down toilets every single day. This fat would block up the sewers in two weeks if it wasn't for a crack squad employed to literally suck it out of the system. I'm here to meet a man who heads a fat-busting team fighting to unclog this city's arteries. 2,000 miles of pipes bring sewage to the plant to be treated. The fat and grease gets separated out and ends up in one of six grease vaults. Well, this is the middle part of the, the grease vault. As you can see, they just opened the lid and you can take a look down oh, in there and geez. see the standing grease. And there you have the, what we call the grease mat on top of the God, water underneath. Vaulting. We remove from our collection system and treatment plant between five and 10,000 gallons a week. These grease vaults store the fat that would otherwise cause the sewers to overflow. Every week, they're emptied by a giant vacuum cleaner. The grease solidifies in the pipe. Inside the diameter of the pipe slowly reduces till it can become either a stoppage or what we call a sanitary sewer overflow, where raw sewage actually comes out of our sewer manhole out in the public. Do you know what's so ironic is exactly what happens in your arteries when you have a high-fat diet. The cholesterol deposits on the walls of your arteries build up and they get narrow and narrow and narrow. And any small blood clot that would usually pass through can then get stuck. Boom, you've got a heart attack or a stroke. Much of this artery clogging grease has already done its damage because it's already passed through the bodies of the Vegas population. The smell is absolutely overpowering, but unfortunately, we haven't finished yet. We've now got to dispose of all that grease. We've got to take it out into the middle of the desert and squirt it all out there. And I'm really not looking forward to that. Vegas sits in the Mojave Desert, 54,000 square miles of arid land that stretches across four US states. But every year, more and more of it becomes landfill. OK, so now it is the moment that I really haven't been waiting for. This lever pushes forward. And I could potentially get covered in this stuff. There is a possibility of that. The things I do for telly. Ready? Oh, my goodness me. Ooh. <laughs> oh. So what happens next? It sits here and it dries out, it solidifies. Then our good friends at the landfill will come in and mix it with dirt. And we've found this to be the best way to dispose of our grease. Rick and his team are saving the health of the Las Vegas sewers with a vacuum cleaner. In the North Vista Hospital, doctors are using a similar method to help people suffering the painful and dangerous complications of obesity and type 2 diabetes. With rates of obesity soaring, more and more patients are being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, a particularly nasty complication of which are non-healing ulcers and sores. Around 30 diabetic patients a day are coming to North Vista Hospital to receive treatment for their open wounds. And Dr Carl Williams oversees their care. How long have you been working here? About 27 years. Has it changed or is it pretty much the same? No, it has changed. There's been a little more of a problem with obesity and obesity-related problems with diabetes. You really, that you've noticed that, yeah, definitely. I've too, especially at a younger age group. And this is mainly type 2 diabetes. Mainly type 2. Related type. to weight. Exactly. Almost exclusively? Almost exclusively, yeah. Hey, Chris. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you good. How are you, Chris? Nice to meet you. I'm Chris James. Nice to meet you, Chris. So this is your left foot. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty bad looking. Yeah. And it was a lot worse. We were really afraid of him losing his leg. Mm. And so what we want to do is clean everything up. What's your story medically? What, what was the cause of all this? I think it was diabetes. You know, the, the wounds just didn't heal like it would in a normal person that didn't have diabetes. Doctors here are using a new piece of medical equipment called a wound vacuum to help heal chronic wounds. It works by thoroughly extracting waste and infected fluid. It's remarkably effective. These wounds traditionally are so, so difficult to heal and sometimes they never do. And the patient ends up having to have an amputation. But now with this device, that happens less and less. 
Every time I come, it keeps getting smaller and smaller, so I know it's light at the end of the tunnel, finally. You know, I don't think you ever get used to seeing wounds like that. And they're a reminder of what a horrific disease diabetes is. It causes kidney failure, blindness, ulcers, non-healing wounds like that. It's really not something I would wish on anybody. But as long as Las Vegas' obesity problem continues to grow, the number of people like Chris seeking help will rise. It's been two months since cheese lover Gary and coffee addict Amy left the feeding clinic, and it's time to find out if they've stuck to Dr. Christian's healthy eating plan. It's a milestone today, you know, even if it turns out that I haven't put as much weight on as I'd hoped, you know, I know I can put weight on now and keep going with what I have been doing. I am very nervous. I'm not sure how much I've lost. I know I've lost a little. People have seen me for a little while, and if they don't even say hello to me, they're like, Gary, you lost weight. I'm like, uh. So, Amy, tell me how the last few months have been for you. I wake up hungry. Mm -hmm. I wake up and I want something to eat, and I'll be hungry again for lunch. Isn't it funny how eating more makes you more hungry? I know. I never imagined that I'd be one of these people that wakes up with three meals a day and maybe snacks in between. And coffee, because coffee was really the one thing that got you through the day. Have you at least substituted some of that coffee for food? Oh, I only have one, possibly two coffees a day now. Good. Are you making yourself more of a priority now than for at least equal to baby now? Yeah, I am. I've realised now, because of all of this, mm. that I'm just as important as the baby is. I need to be healthy to look after him properly. Good. I'm glad you realised that. And it's not, it's not being selfish, it's not neglecting your baby, it's just no longer neglecting you, which I think you were doing before. So what's new for you? Tell me. Well, my diet's new. You know, every day I get up, I do exercise, half an hour exercise. And I'm just conscious of what I'm eating and I feel much better for it. So cheese for you really was the one thing I had to take you by the ear and wrap your knuckles over, wasn't it? Because your cheese intake was massive. I bought cheese and it was in the fridge for two weeks and I was just looking at it. I didn't budge to it at all. You had a really big shock in America with your blood pressure, didn't yeah. you? It was, it was super high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my blood pressure has gone really low. The doctor said I could come off the tablets and I just need to carry on maintaining, losing weight. And I'm not doing it just for me, it's for me and my family. Good. If I could get 10 to 15 years more on my life, I'm going for it. Time for Gary and Amy to be reunited. Hiya. <laughs> How are you? I knew your cheeks would be big. <laughs> How you been? Yeah, not bad. You look really well. Thank you. Oh. You, got your, your, you got your big belly <laughs> game, man. It's not gone down. It's, it's not gone down. <laughs> so what have you been eating? Everything, anything I can reach. <laughs> yeah, you've put on though, you definitely have. Yeah, I can feel it on the belly. <laughs> you look great. Thank yeah. you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Carry on flirting, carry on flirting. This is the good bit. Yeah. This is where I come and pat you on the back and tell you how well you've done. Whether you've been working hard enough or not. Amy, let's start with you. Have you put on any weight? Yes. You have. You've put on a very respectable four pounds. It doesn't sound, on paper, a huge amount, I know, but what it's done to you and the changes and the significant difference that it's made to your health and to your future health is huge. She looks plum a bit. Look at her belly. Yeah, Look at her plum I belly. Know. I know, I know. <laughs> Not only that, your arms and legs have expanded by an inch all the way around each. <laughs> yeah, so you have definitely got bigger. You will definitely have to stop shopping in the kids' section. <laughs> Right, Gary, has it paid off? Have you lost any weight? Well, you've lost a bit. How much do you think? What's your guess? I reckon a stone. A stone? Yeah. Not a stone. Either. More than a stone? A bit more. Two stone? A bit more. T more than two stone? Two and a half stone you've <laughs> lost. <laughs> two and a half stone? Wow. Wow, that's good, that's good. I knew it was two. What well, the two and a half is good, sounds good. The man boob area has gone down by five inches. Wow. That's phenomenal, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, are you going to keep this up now? Is this you for life? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is a part of my new regime for my whole life. I'm not going to go back to how I was, because that's, that's poison. I'm so pleased to know that it is possible and I can keep going keep putting weight on and keep making more changes in my life that I need to. 
Me and Amy's definitely gonna stay in touch. She needs to come down to my restaurant and eat some fried dumplings.